I'm very, very specific in the way that they fit together, correct? Very specific. And sometimes what happens is the substrate comes together, which the enzyme will allow these things to break apart. Or sometimes you can put substrate together that will allow them to put, to, to put things together. But the bottom line is, is that uh, this little site right here is called the catalytic site. By the way, do you see two types of catalytic sites here? Good. And in one of them, the catalytic site changes its shape, doesn't it? Next, I think that these words are self-explanatory. Exoenzymes are enzymes that are meant to be used outside of the cell, and endoenzymes are used to be used inside the cell. I think that's pretty straightforward, exoenzymes versus endoenzymes, right? You'll learn that these enzymes can be pretty virulent when it comes to bacteria. I'm going to teach you some of the enzymes that bacteria make that make them so dangerous. Right? Next, we have enzymes that are always on and are always produced in the same amounts all the time, but we have regulated enzymes that will only be turned on or turned off at certain times. Do you agree that it would be efficient to only make insulin and produce insulin when there's sugar in the bloodstream. Yeah, I don't think it would be good to be making large amounts of insulin all the time. Insulin's always made by the pancreas, but it's released in the bloodstream basically as a response to sugar in the bloodstream. If you don't have any sugar in the bloodstream, Insulin doesn't get released at the same amounts as when you have a big meal. Have a giant meal, blood glucose goes up, more insulin gets secreted. Mm -hmm. Don't eat for two days, you're not going to have the same amount of insulin in the bloodstream. So you do understand that our insulin reaction is a regulated reaction. It's very primitive to have something that's always on. Right? Saliva is produced in response to what? Food. We'll get to regulate that time when we get more to genetics.